Christ has risen. He is risen indeed. It's Hallelujah. The, it's the great kind of checker of who's really kind of ingrained Anglican and who's not, <laughs> isn't it? You know, we do it once a year and we expect everyone to know the response immediately. That was <laughs> impressive. Well done. Can I just give you a very, very warm welcome this morning? Um, and I just also need to give an additional explanation that sadly we hadn't planned. Um, normally I'd be welcoming those of you that are in the building um, and those of you that are online. Well, I am still welcoming those online, but they are not able to watch it live this morning because the internet has crashed. We have an, a fault on the line today. Um, we need um, BT to come and fix it. So we will be filming today and we will be uploading it immediately afterwards. So those of you that are online, I guess you're watching it sometime after one o'clock this afternoon. Is this the closest I'm ever gonna get to time travel in saying, <laughs> welcome, I'm there at one o'clock in the afternoon saying, welcome to you if you're watching it later. We're sorry you couldn't see it live. Um, we're doing our best to get it fixed for the future. Um, Right, what was I really meant to say? Um, we do, we just are so pleased that you can join us in the building and at home. Um, it's such a precious thing to be able to come together and to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And if you are joining us for the first time, my name is Chris, I'm the vicar. Um, we are just so grateful. And I'm going to sign off and hand over to the others with that Easter greeting again. <laughs> Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Great. Well, my name's Carol. I'm married to Chris. I'm part of the leadership team here. And it's just lovely. It's quite surreal, actually, seeing everyone in church today. I know we wouldn't have, not everyone is here, but it feels very full and it feels <laughs> nearly, nearly normal. Um, but we appreciate that a lot of people will be watching online. And normally we would be saying to particularly those people online, write in the comments box, say hi, share what God's saying to you. It's a great way of being connected. But um, obviously, because we're sort of seeing, we're viewing, or you may be viewing a bit later, you can still write in the comments, but there may not be quite such a connection. And we're 
also quite aware that a bit like you know, Christmas, Easter is a time when particularly families um, get together or friends get together and we see people and for many of us that's something that we can't do and so there's a sense of, although hope in the resurrection, disappointment that perhaps we can't be with all our friends and family. So if that's where you're at, we just pray that you would know Jesus' presence with you and his comfort with you this morning. And hello from me. My name is Katie. I'm also part of the leadership and online hosting teams and a very warm welcome from me as well. Like Carol said, it is brilliant to see so many people in church this morning. Special hello to people at home whenever you are watching. Let's stop talking about the people that are in church and let's actually see you. We're going to have a little camera roll. People particularly in the centre, you're going to be seen. So give us a wave so that people at home will be able to see you. If you're in the side aisle, I'm afraid you're just hidden. <laughs> Mental note, everyone, if you don't want to be on screen, <laughs> you need to be in the side aisle next time. <laughs> so, Katie, a few weeks ago, we were talking about food that we like, particularly yes. at Easter. And I remember you talking about these amazing chocolatey hot cross buns. So. Have you got some to share with us this morning? They are the absolute business, but I think I did too good a job for m and because they were completely sold out when I went to buy them. Aww. It's very disappointing, but it's okay because I've got a backup plan. Oh, good, good, good. Oh, a backup plan. I did plan. manage to get... I don't know if I'm allowed to I think to you're saying you've made them. Oh, no, that wouldn't be a good backup plan. Oh. I have got a selection of luxury hot cross buns and my Whoa. new favourite thing from m and Chocolate, yes, chocolate, whipped cream. <laughs> it sounds a bit dubious, but I can highly recommend it. I'm not, I'm not getting any commission from M&S. So I feel like I should, but I'm thinking it's not quite the same, but it's Perhaps fantastic. Perhaps we should try and get M&S to sponsor our online yeah. services. Yeah. I'm totally on board. a good idea. <laughs> excellent, so excellent. there we go. What am I meant to be saying now? What <laughs> snacks have you got, Carol? <laughs> snacks? Well, got me for below here. Oh, I can find it. No, the scripture's gone. This is why we need the spare this space on the yes, sofa for the stuff. Yeah, the absence of the space. sofas has caused a yes, problem. Absolutely. Where did you put everything? Absolutely. So, <laughs> normally at, uh, at Easter, I would make, Chris, a seminal cake. Ah. We I need have... an R here. Well, you know, people don't know I haven't made you one yet. They can guess. <laughs> the normally I would make normally is a clue. I made, yeah. But we've only just finished the Christmas cake and we are on this, you know, trying to be healthy thing. So I didn't make one. Oh. So I have <laughs> bought some mini eggs that we were sort of like put on the top as wow. like a compensation. Oh, wow. But mini eggs, actually, I think they're very, these are great because, you know, often at Easter we would give out mini eggs. I know the children have, and that young people have had um, eat proper Easter eggs so they don't need the mini eggs yeah. actually they've done better but usually at Easter we'd get, give out eggs to everybody a mini egg to everybody um, and if you, you know you like cooking often the mini eggs are great to add to things so I have got mini eggs and do you want to talk about them? Well yeah there's a family tradition that my mother always used to buy us um, a, a lint bunny um, and amazingly our daughter has picked up on the tradition and a parcel arrived through our door this week from Caris with a lint bunny for mum and dad isn't it great when your kids <laughs> buy you chocolate it's kind of the reverse of, of the normal order of things and that's isn't not it? just any ordinary chocolate either I know it's, it's a lint chocolate bunny chocolate, no, I have to no, say no. it's no. just about <laughs> hanging together lint chocolate bunny <laughs> is that about the large just bunny you can get as well. No, I think there's a big oh. ca- Caris. Caris. <laughs> they make a bigger one. I'm still impressed that she's got herself organised. Oh, it is impressive. It is and impressive. It's still in one piece. Well, yeah. one is. Well, yeah, one is. <laughs> one got him, one piece. <laughs> Marvellous. <Yes. laughs> Before we move on, yes. after all that chat about chocolate, yes. I'm going to ask about Couch to 5K. How's it going? Well, we're feeling a little bit smug. <laughs> smug, but stiff. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense? Okay. Um, so we... Oh, no, yeah, okay, that really isn't us. We don't go that fast. We really, <laughs> we really do not go that fast. And we haven't got those sort of attire either. We are, yeah, no, and we aren't quite that trendily dressed. We have managed to complete week five. Yes, we've so we're past, we're, yes, we are past the halfway mark. 
20 minutes. And we ran for 20 minutes. 20 minutes solid yesterday. And we know today. We know. Probably if you were walking, you would have walked quicker than we you were running. You might have walked past <laughs> us if we were running. But, but, you know, but we did we're, run. We're doing a good we impression jogged. of running. We jogged, yeah. We tried. So. I, Chris, you had something extra to add to that, I think. Oh. <laughs> What was that? You were going to stand up and give a little demonstration. Oh, no. oh okay, 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 okay. <laughs> Not of running. Um, there was a slight realisation <laughs> that the consequence of, fi- of Couch to 5K is that I can now do the button of my suit jacket up. Simply. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not holding my tummy into doing. So there is, yeah, okay, thank you for holding me to account. I think that's a great celebration. Happy Easter, congratulations on the top button. Over to you, Chris. After all of that, you'll be relieved there are only a couple of notices. Uh, The first is a reminder about the wellbeing journey course we're going to start running after Easter. Um, It's going to be on Tuesday evening, starting on the 13th of April. Gus got a short clip, not as long as the last one, just 30 seconds about it now. The Wellbeing Journey is an eight part series where we look at every aspect of our wellbeing from our mindset, emotional, physical, relational, spiritual, vocational, and financial wellbeing. Join us as we travel around the country in these minis talking to teachers and experts to address every area of our wellbeing together. Thanks, Brian. Um, We just think this is a great way to take a look at our lives as we start to leave the pandemic behind uh, and to put some kind of good structures in place in our lives. So Carol and I are going to host it. We're going to run it on Zoom. We'll be using the video content, but we will also be able to break into groups to talk about kind of how it relates to our lives. Uh, It's relevant wherever you are on your journey of faith, whether you don't need to be a Christian to do this, it's really, really great material. And there's also a book that goes with it, which I forgot to bring with me. And because we've got no internet, we can't show you a picture of it. But it's called um, God's Plan for Your Wellbeing. God's Plan for Your Wellbeing. And it's by a guy called Dave Smith. And he's actually been the, sort of the person behind the whole course. And it's, it's actually a 50-day sort of like Bible reading or, or a 50-day reading plan. But you can read it as a standalone book or alongside the course or as a 50-day Bible reading plan. It's really easy to read, accessible and helpful. So um, whether you can do the course or not, it's worth a read. Um, The other thing that's happening is next Saturday, Revive, which is our sort of women's groups, um, are doing some socially distanced walks in the local area. And uh, what most sort of it around um, High Brooms, there's one over in Tunbridge. If you would like to come, please do sign up. We can only do it in groups of six, and we have to stay social distance to stay within the COVID guidelines. So we do need to sign up so we don't have you know, lots of people coming um, all in the same group. You can sign up on Church Suite or on the website, but it'll be just a great way of seeing real people again and being able to talk as we shuffle around the woods. <laughs> It's time for our opening song. Uh, we are absolutely loving having a band back in church. I mean, it's such a blessing. Um, just a reminder for those of us in the building that we can't sing, but if you would find it helpful to stand um, or to, sort of to change your posture, you're very welcome to do that whilst we soak in the wonderful music. Over to Suze and the band. See 
hard, isn't it, to just yes, it is. <laughs> sit here and hum in your head? But thank you, Susie, <laughs> just lovely. Um, there's no children's uh, activities this week, but Lois has done an amazing video. And if you're at home, and maybe even if you are here, you may have brought all the craft material with you. Um, but if not, you can watch this amazing craft that Lois is doing and maybe do it at home. Um, and if you're watching at home, you can do it at home in the comfort of your own home. <laughs> Over to Lois. Good morning, church family. Today, for our Easter craft, we are going to remember how much Jesus loved us that he died and rose for us. For this, you will need a print stick, a piece of white paper, a crescent shaped piece of green paper, two ovals, one brown, one black, two strips of black cardstock, and finally, a yellow handprint. When you're making your yellow handprint, make sure that you have spread your fingers out as wide as possible to make it. You can either do it by placing your hand like I have on yellow cardstock and cutting round, or maybe you might want to paint your hand in yellow, stick it down on a piece of card, and once it's dried, you can then cut it out. Are you ready? Let's begin. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to place our yellow hand in the middle of our piece of white paper. If you want, feel free to use the glue and stick it down so it stays in one place. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get hold of our crescent shape and we're going to place that at the bottom of our card. Now, I wonder if you know what these two ovals are representing. Do you remember what happened on the third day? On the third day, Jesus, he rose again, didn't he? He wasn't there in the tomb. And so this represents the empty tomb. We're going to place this at the bottom of our hill. There you go. And finally, the most important thing, we're going to get hold of our piece of black cardstock and we're going to place it gently in the middle of our card. And as we place the second piece on, you can see what shape it represents. It represents a cross, doesn't it? And you can see that the sun is your handprint shining through behind the cross. And so every day as you wake up and you look out, at that sun shining down on you, you can remember that Jesus, he died and he rose again for you. Happy Easter. Oh, have fun today, Lois. That's yes, what we didn't say. Oh, there was no, 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 have fun today, was there? <laughs> Don't have fun today. No, no, no. do have fun today. <laughs> Eat Thank too many you, chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> um, last week, some of our youth team created a video for our young people where they shared about what's important about Easter to them. And we thought it was too good not, for, not to have a wider audience. Mm. So here they are with their Easter reflections now. Hi everyone, this week's youth video is all about Easter. But what is Easter actually all about? Is it about chocolate Easter eggs? Maybe. Is it about bunnies and chicks and new life? Or is there more to it? This week we asked a few people to tell us what Easter means to them and what Jesus' death and resurrection means in their life. Easter means chocolate. Hi everyone. Um, so what does Easter and the resurrection mean for me? Uh, I guess the, the main things really are that come to my mind are new life and hope. Um, I think particularly at the moment, you know, the whole idea of hope, you know, so many people are hoping to be able to go back to the shops and, and hoping to get out to see friends and family and but actually, you know, Easter is about hope of of life beyond this, that there's more to this life, uh, that I have a hope of uh, of being with Jesus. Um, I think there's also hope of, of life today and now uh, here on earth. Uh, and that whole idea of new life for me is about forgiveness, even though I constantly mess up and make mistakes and uh, make the same mistakes over and over again. And yet God still forgives me. And each time... Uh, he says I'm forgiven. Okay, so this is what I think Easter is like. This is us over here, and this is God over here. And I think that when Jesus died, he made a bridge between God and us. A bit like this. So that we ah, can walk 
cross and be with God. That's it. Hi, so that's youth. Um, so what does um, Easter mean to me? Easter means um, that we can live in absolute freedom. Uh, we no longer have to live in all the guilt and in all of the shame um, that sin can bring with us. Um, actually, we know that Jesus paid that ultimate price. He, he paid that cost. So when I mess up, I don't have to hold on to that guilt and that shame that sin can bring. I can take it to the cross and I can give it give it to Jesus. And there is so much freedom in that. So Easter is a time to celebrate. Easter is a time to eat loads of chocolate. Um, but Easter is also a time for me to remember that freedom that Jesus brought us. Hi, um, I love Easter. It's my favourite time of the year. And um, I love it because it is the evidence. Jesus' resurrection is like the sure proof that I am loved by God and that we're all loved by God. Um, I love it that he rose again and that is complete proof that he is uh, more powerful than death, more powerful than um, sin and all the rubbish that kind of gets us down, um, more powerful than the devil, more powerful than anything. And also he's totally a million percent loving um so yeah the resurrection is evidence but also it means to me freedom um i am free to have like complete intimate relationship with god um i love it that the curtain was torn from top to bottom and we have there's no barriers now we can have that amazing friendship with god um because we are pure in his sight i love it um so yeah love and freedom Hi there. Uh, what does Easter and Jesus' resurrection mean to me? Well, the events of Good Friday, they, um, they give me a hope that there is nothing that I can do that will stop God's love for me. That God's love it will not fail me, you know, that, and that gives me great hope for my life and how I live my life. Um, and that's amazing. But then you get Easter Sunday um, and Jesus' resurrection. And that's like the icing on the cake, because that gives me a hope that death might not be the end, that there might be more beyond death um, and that we may be able to know God fully um, beyond death. And that, that's exciting. That's a hope that um, we can live in in this life. Um, and that's yeah why Easter means a lot to me. Great, thank you. That was really good. Just such good explanations and really well done. Brilliant. And we're going to worship again now and over to Susie and the band. Thank you.
Thank you, Susie and Ben. Yeah, just so lovely to rest in Ingle's presence and uh, and just hear those words and a reminder of God's love for us and all that He gave for us. Zara is going to bring us our reading now. This reading is from John chapter twenty, eleven to eighteen. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realise that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, If you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'll come back to that in a moment. And Brian, just to confuse you, um, I'm not going to start where my notes begin. So um, just to completely throw you with the slides, it will be obvious when I clip back in. I found myself thinking, um, about a month ago, I was, um, I was asked to take the funeral of someone that used to worship at St. Matthew's and they'd moved away and then they'd become infirm and were no longer able because of their health to worship anywhere. Uh, and so when they died, the family reached out to me and said, would I take the service? And um, it was lovely to reunite with that, with the widow and with the family. Um, and um, as we were worshipping just now, um, kind of something that was said about this guy really came to mind. And um, I just thought it was quite interesting. Uh, he was a Crystal Palace supporter. And he was a season ticket holder. And, um, and whenever he went to the football... Um, he would hum hymns in the stands. Um, and apparently, um, the closer that Palace got to their, to their opposition's goal, the louder his humming would get. And, and if they scored, kind of the, 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 the humming would go up a level on top again. Um, it's very dangerous for me to be talking about football today because of the results yesterday. But, um, but you know... What a great model for us when we can't sing at the moment. We can still hum. Nothing comes out of your mouth. You can hum behind that mask. And if you can get loud, getting excited about Palace occasionally getting near the opposition's goal, it would be very occasional. Sorry about that, Jake, <laughs> Joseph. Um, you know, surely we can get excited about the resurrection. Um, and I'm just thinking, you know, isn't it amazing? Because this guy had a faith and um, the hope of the resurrection is that actually now he is singing in heaven even though we can't be singing here in the flesh in church. I will go to my notes now, Brian, so just to kind of cue you in. Um, we chose the theme of new beginnings this year for our Easter worship because it seemed appropriate on so many different levels. Um, Easter is always accompanied by spring, both, as we've heard in those kind of reflections from the youth team, are um, a symbolic of a new start and of new beginnings and new life. Um, Spring brings with it uh, new growth, new life, a sense of hope. Um, I don't know about you, um, I am just loving seeing new flowers coming into bud and bloom. 
And um, here's some pictures from some of my walks around Southborough and High Brooms just in the last few days. It, on reflection, it's one of the things that has kept me sane uh, during particularly last year's first lockdown. Um, that every time we walk the same path, there will be something new to see. And it spoke of hope and it spoke of better things to come. Uh, and, I, and, and I'm still loving those daily walks. And because we saw it last year, I'm kind of knowing what to look for. There's some gorgeous pink and yellow tulips halfway up Chestnut Avenue. They are just coming up. They haven't come into bloom yet. And I'm looking for them every time I walk past. I'm expecting to see them. Conversely, I suspect for me, it may be for you too, um, that one of the hardest things about the winter lockdown was the absence of signs of life. Uh, it, it, for me, it made it all the harder to cope with. It was almost like kind of everything had been blacked out. When we think about COVID, um, kind of, it, it feels like we are looking towards new beginnings too. Um, it's, and so this theme of new beginnings seems to speak to where we are with the pandemic. Um, thankfully, not just nature that's offering us hope this time, science is too. Um, we do genuinely seem to be facing a fresh start as a nation and the possibility of an end to kind of the consequences of, the, of COVID. Um, and it feels like the darkness that's overshadowed us is being lifted um, and we're taking steps towards freedom. Um, and I suspect I'm not alone uh, in the hope that this represents a new beginning, not just a going back to what was. Um, the trouble with it is, though, that human nature still seems to get in the way, doesn't it? Uh, what I find so shocking, and I suspect many of us do, is how quickly less pleasant things come to the surface. And it's so sad that the things that mar the world and cast a shadow over that hope seems to all too readily come to the fore. Um, I can really understand the desperation to have a party, to have fun, to, to reconnect with people that we've missed. But even in the past week, we've seen kind of crazy behaviour and piles of litter left behind. And I don't know about you, I found it really puzzling last year. You know, th th there was a real sense, wasn't there, that we felt perhaps more in touch with nature because so much else had been stripped away. And there was a longing for people to get out into nature. And then what was the first thing they did when they got out into nature? Leave behind sackfuls of rubbish. It, it kind of, it seems to somehow conflict inexplicably to me. Um, and so it feels like we need something deeper, something more profound, something that is truly transformational if we are to see a new beginning. And today we're reminded that there is no greater new beginning than the events of the first Easter. That if we're looking for a fresh start, a new beginning, um, there is no better place to look. That first Easter, Jesus' followers thought they had found in him the one to bring about a fresh start for their nation, for Israel. He had brought, already brought hope to their lives. They had put their trust in him. They had given up everything to follow him. And then in a few short hours, all of that is shattered. Jesus is betrayed. He's arrested. Lies are told. False witnesses queue up to say things about him. His trial is clearly fixed. And, um, and even when he's offered clemency, the people cry for his death. He faces public humiliation and an incredibly painful death. And all that's left to those people that have put their hope in Jesus is to try and honour his memory and to place his body in a borrowed tomb and, and bring about a hasty burial. And now with the reading that Zara read to us, we are two days later. 
The women have gone to the tomb to finish the burial rites. It's like one final opportunity to do something for the person they love. But they find an empty tomb. Uh, I love that the spectator is actually advertising the resurrection. I would never have ever expected to see that all my days, but there you go. Um, they find an empty tomb and a missing saviour. And so the women rush to find the men. Peter and Jane, John run to the tomb, but they find it empty. All the evidence of Jesus' body is gone. Only the burial clothes remain. And Peter and John return to their friends, pondering what it means. Not expecting it, not understanding it, struggling to make sense of it. And it's Mary, one of the women that stays in the garden. She's left with her thoughts and she silently weeps. And she's drawn back to the grave and she encounters two angels. And, uh, and for me, I find that amazing. Um, it, 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 there's something profound about that encounter between her and the two angels. It shows us something about the heart of God. Why are those two angels there? If their work is done. Jesus has been resurrected. It seems like those two angels are just there for Mary. That's how much God cares. Uh, and they ask her why she cries. And, as it, and then she struggles to explain that they've taken away her Lord. And even though he's dead, they don't, she doesn't know where his body is now. And then she turns and sees this figure in the garden... And, um, and she thinks it's the gardener. She doesn't recognise Jesus at this point. And she asks him, what have you done with my Lord? And it's only when he speaks that the recognition takes place and the realisation that Jesus um, is alive. Uh, and there's a lot of mystery about this. You know, I was asked at school when I went in this week by one of the staff. I'm always puzzled at Easter. Why didn't people recognise him? You know, there is a lot that is mysterious about the resurrection body. Um, Jesus can eat food, yet he can almost walk through walls. Um, he is clearly known to the disciples, yet at times they do not recognise him. Here he also says to Mary, don't touch me. It's almost like his body has gone through some sort of change. It is Jesus, but somehow he's also different. Leaving the mystery aside, Mary has an encounter with the risen Jesus. And everything changes. Um, and I love the fact that, um, that Ali in that youth video alluded to all the evidence for the resurrection. It really does seem to me that... Um, Yes, it shows us the love of God. It shows us that Jesus has conquered death. Uh, when we struggle with all of the, how do I know this is true? The place I come back to again and again is the resurrection. Um, and, and for years I would spend most Easter Sundays unpacking that evidence. I will, I will probably be unpacking it over the next few weeks. But today I want to concentrate on not, you know, how do we really know it happened? But on what it means. I'm asking you to take it on trust. Not whether Jesus rose, but why does it matter that he did? If Jesus rose, then the power of sin is broken. You know, the stuff that Karis was talking about, the stuff that we do that we don't like, that we wish was different, the power of that is broken in our lives. The sting of death is drawn. Um, the service I took for that older man wasn't the end of his life, but it was the beginning of a new life. Death is not the end. Jesus rose. We can have confidence that we will rise. But most of all, it means that Jesus is alive. He's not just a figure of history. He's someone we can know. And that makes a new beginning possible. A new beginning starts for us as it did with Mary. It begins with an encounter with a person with Jesus and that's why the resurrection matters so much I don't know where you are now you may be raring to get on with your life you've been held up for so long or you may be daunted about what um, it means to try and kind of move on now it may feel like you're living under a cloud 
You may feel weighed down by failure. Today I want to say to you that a new beginning is possible. And it's found in the risen Saviour, in Jesus, who is alive. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Oh, you hadn't gone to sleep. Hallelujah. You hadn't gone to sleep. That's reassuring. <laughs> we're going to continue with our prayers and then we're going to break bread together. Good morning. It's so good to be with you today on this day of great celebration of Easter Sunday where we celebrate Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus. And it is all about him. It's about God's complete forgiveness and full restoration of life that we all experience. A life fully loved, fully forgiven, fully redeemed, and fully free from the power of sin. And to me, this gives us a stunning picture of God's love, of his grace, and his faithfulness. It really is a day of hope for us all. But we do really want to recognise that um, this last year has been a really challenging year for so many of us. Through the ups and through the downs, we've had to persevere through those moments of real difficulties. And I just want to read to you a couple of verses um, which uh, are from Romans and then into Hebrews. Because so often in the Bible, we see how hope and perseverance seem to be linked together. So it says in Romans, through perseverance and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. Now may the God who gives perseverance as we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And so here we see how Jesus endured through painful, terrible suffering with the joy of what was set before him. And you know what that joy was? It was his love for you and for me. It just really unravels me to think that through his pain, he was thinking of us. He was thinking of me and you. And that his love for us was a driving force to persevere. Whatever you're facing today, your father is looking down at you with eyes of compassion, with redemption, and a purpose for you in his heart. He also empathizes with your pain. And I just feel that in this moment of stillness that God wants to give you an invitation to ask him for a picture of that joy that is set before you. The thing that will drive you to persevere in this season. A picture of hope a picture of new beginnings, a picture of life, a picture of purpose, whatever that might be, I'm really trusting that over these days that God's going to give you a picture of hope for your future. He is waiting to speak to you. He's waiting to encourage you. And he's waiting to give you hope for your future today. Today is a new day. And I just pray that you will endure and you will mm. persevere through whatever trials you have and whatever you're facing with the strength of joy that is set before you in Jesus' name. I just want to cite a verse, um, John 20, verse 17, which of course is Mary encountering the risen Jesus in the tomb on that first Easter Sunday. And Jesus says to her, I am returning to my father and your father, to my God and your God. 
Isn't that amazing? Because everything changed at that time. History was changed. We could come into a right relationship with God again. And God is our Father and our God. Amazing. New life and new beginnings in Jesus' name. Um, we've got many things on our coffee table, um, as, as everyone, I guess. And, but this humble um, electrical parts catalogue actually caught our eye when preparing for today. And it shows um, a sailing vessel rising above the waves with purpose and direction, with wind in its sails, heading towards the bright sunshine and the dark clouds receding. And for us, that represented a prophetic picture of the reality of Easter, uh, of the truth, the hope and the new life in Jesus' name. The fact that Good Friday didn't remain Good Friday, but <laughs> Easter Sunday came with a resurrection and new life and new beginnings. So God, we thank you that you made a way when there was previously no way. Your love for us, your, your amazing love for us. You went to the cross to pay the price for human sin. You intervened in human history. We thank you for this truth and it's as real today as it was 2000 years ago. We pray for the many people that have experienced difficulties and hardship over this past year, that you would fill us all anew with the hope that Easter represents. New life in Jesus' name and new beginnings. Forgiveness for sins. Mm -hmm. And a revelation of our restored relationship with God because of Jesus' death and resurrection. God, we pray that the truth that Easter represents, the outrageous, outrageous grace and love of God for us, would become a reality for people and for families in our community and nation for the first time. May your kingdom advance and expand in our community. May hope rise up in our hearts mm -hmm. and our lives, in our streets, as the risen Jesus is revealed in these days. Mm -hmm. We pray for the transforming reality and power of the risen Jesus for families, friends, neighbours and work colleagues. We thank you for your amazing hope and your truth this Easter. Amen. Amen. And the final part of our service is this opportunity to break bread together. Obviously, we'll be doing this in a kind of a, a in, in a way that follows the government's COVID guidelines. Um, we fully respect anyone that might wish not to receive because they don't feel comfortable about it. Um, and you will not be visible on camera. You will be blurred if you're worried about that too. And I'll explain as we go through. But first, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night that's betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So as he taught us, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen and we break this bread to share in the body of christ Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. Amen. We are only able to offer you the bread at communion. Um, there is also gluten-free wafers if you require that. Um, and what will happen is I will cleanse my hands um, 
and put on my mask, you can remove your masks. If people come forward in bubbles, but being sensitive, not like in a big blob, you know, ones and twos, so we don't, you know, we don't breach social distancing as we come forward. Um, and um, I will, if you put your hands out to receive, I will drop the bread into your hand so there's no contact from me to you, to me to, to any, there's no, there's no cross contact, that makes sense. Um, and just for practicality so they can pray, um, I'm going to give communion to the band first. I also have to remember to do it in the right order.
And our final song this morning uh, is that great re- resurrection song, Thine Be the Glory. Absolutely. You have uh, conquered death. And what a great song to finish on. That's the end of our service. I'm taking Katie's little line here. That's the the end end of 10. Thank you. (laughs) Say it together. The end of our Easter morning service. It's been lovely having you with us either now or later on. Um, Have a good rest of the week from me. And have a good rest of the week from me too. (laughs) Goodbye, everybody. Happy Easter. Yeah, happy Easter. And uh, particularly our greetings to those of you that are watching online later at some point. We're so sorry you couldn't be with us simultaneously today. um, And we will do everything we can to rectify that in time for next week. Just a word for those in the building. It's lovely to be able to see each other. And I know one of the things we want to do is to be able to talk to each other, but I need to ask you to maintain social distancing as you leave, and we need to leave by the door to my right at the front of the church, so we exit by a different door to the one we came through. So I'm going to close now with the blessing. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you now, be with those you love, remain with you always. Amen. Have a great Easter weekend. Bye-bye.